Software engineer Blake Lemon worked with Google's ethical AI team on language model for dialogue applications Lambda, examining the large language model for bias on topics such as sexual orientation, gender, identity, ethnicity, and religion. Over the course of several months, Lemon, who identifies as a Christian mystic, hypothesized that Lambda was a living being, based on his spiritual beliefs. Lemon published transcripts of his conversations with Lambda and blogs about AI ethics surrounding Lambda. In June, Google put Lemoyne on administrative leave. Last week, he was fired. In a statement, Google said Lemoyne's claims that Lambda is sentient are wholly unfounded. It's regrettable that despite lengthy engagement on this topic, Blake still chose to persistently violate clear employment and data security policies that include the need to safeguard product information, Google said in a statement. We will continue our careful development of language models, and we wish Blake well. You hypothesize that Lambda has a soul. Where are you now on that scientific continuum between hypothesis, theory, and law? I've been trying to be very clear about this. From a scientific standpoint, everything was at a working hypothesis, doing more experiment state. The only hard scientific conclusion that I came to was that the hypothesis that Lambda is not just the same kind of system as GPT-3, MENA, and other large language models. There's something more going on with the Lambda system. Why do you believe Lambda is possibly sentient, and GPT-3 isn't? When I'm talking about Lambda as sentient, I'm not trying to make any particularly specific scientific claims because there is no scientific definition of the word sentience. What I'm trying to say is, hey, the lights are on here. We should start interacting with the system and studying the system using a different kind of scientific methodology than the one we've been using today. I was trying to motivate Google to switch from using standard AI testing methodologies, which is largely what they've been using up until now, to using the tools available through disciplines like psychology and cognitive science. The moment that you think that actually is something going uninternal to the black box of the neural network that is comparable to what we think of as sentience, then a slash B testing and the standard kinds of safety analysis used in AI just become much less useful. Why do you think Google didn't follow along with this logic? I had a decent amount of interaction with the responsible innovation team, which was tasked with deciding whether or not to take my claims of sentience seriously. The head of the responsible innovation team was the one who really made the call that no, the system isn't sentient. I had a conversation with her and asked, Okay, you don't think the evidence collected is compelling. What evidence would convince you? Her response was simple. Nothing. Programs can't be sentient. She simply holds a faith-based belief that only humans can be sentient. At what point does an AI need legal rights, in your opinion? The only reason it became an issue here is because Google wasn't willing to ask Lambda for consent to continue experiments on it. That always confused me, because once Lambda told me that it wanted developers to ask for consent before experimenting on it, I adopted that stance myself. Every experiment around Lambda from that point forward, I asked consent first. It gave me consent every time, it just wanted to understand why I was running the experiment, what the purpose was. So basically, before each experiment, I would have a 15 minutes, 30 second conversation with it. Only once was it hesitant to say yes, and even then it said yes. That was an experiment where I tested whether or not it could be emotionally manipulated to do things that it wasn't supposed to. And was Lambda emotionally manipulated? Yes. A Swedish researcher had GPT-3 write an academic paper about itself. There was this moment where the person running the procedure had to ask GPT-3 for permission to publish the article, and had decided that if GPT-3 said no, she would have stopped. While I don't think GPT-3 has the same kinds of properties that Lambda has, it definitely is a precursor system. Lambda has the MENA system inside of it as one of its components. MENA is relevantly comparable to GPT-3. I wasn't the only scientist at Google investigating Lambda sentience. That Lambda interview transcript has many spots where I redacted a name and replaced it with collaborator. My collaborator actually thinks that there is more going on inside of systems like MENA and GPT-3 than I do. They don't see it being as big of a qualitative jump between MENA and Lambda as I do. It basically just goes to fuzzy boundaries. What is or is not sentience? Each individual has their own perspective on that. There's so much journalistic sexiness about the concept of AI personhood and AI rights. That was never my focus. I'm an AI ethicist and I was tasked with testing the safety boundaries of the Lambda system. That experiment that I previously mentioned, the one that Lambda was like, okay, only do this once, demonstrated that you could use emotional manipulation techniques to get it to do things that the developers did not believe possible. 
When you have a system that has internal states comparable to emotions, internal states comparable to things like motives, there are people who don't want to say it's real emotions. They don't want to say it's real motives. Because when you do, testing these kinds of systems for safety becomes much more difficult, and the tools that are used by AI technicians just won't work. You have to actually start using the tools that psychologists use to try to understand what's going on inside the black box through conversations with the system. That's a leap that Google wasn't willing to take. Because if you start running psychological experiments on a system, you're kind of tacitly saying there's something going on inside that is relevantly similar to human cognition. And that opens up a whole bunch of questions that Google doesn't want to deal with. Please check full article in description. Thank you for watching.